I'm Michael Kenney, and welcome to The Heart of the Matter, where we explore the world through the lenses of goodness, truth, and beauty. We study history to gain perspective. We ponder truth to draw from the deep well of wisdom. We invest time, talent, and treasure to strengthen families, communities, and culture. All the while, we proceed with an abiding respect for America's founding principles, the Declaration of Independence and Republican form of government, the U.S. Constitution. A century ago, the great British commentator G.K. Chesterton observed, America is the only nation in the world that is founded on a creed. That creed is set forth with dogmatic and even theological lucidity in the Declaration of Independence, perhaps the only piece of practical politics that is also theoretical politics and also great literature. It enunciates that all men are created equal in their claim to justice, that governments exist to give them that justice, and that their authority is, for that reason, just. It certainly does condemn anarchism, and it does also by inference condemn atheism, since it clearly names the Creator as the ultimate authority from whom these equal rights are derived. Conceived in liberty, America began by declaring universal truths that all are created equal, all are endowed by their Creator with unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. By holding fast to these truths, we fulfill the promise of our beginning. When we stray, honest and courageous leaders rely on these truths to get us back on track. From America's beginning, free markets, private ownership, and investment fundamentals have played a pivotal role. The free market system facilitates the pursuit of happiness. Through diligence, struggle, and private ownership, societies can choose to be good. They can take pride in the beauty of all that is accomplished. They can virtuously be stewards of their communities, building up, not tearing down. By working hard and gaining a return on their investment of time and talent, citizens experience a well-earned sense of accomplishment. Economic opportunity awakens the best of human nature. Properly conceived, incentives inspire the human spirit. This process ignites the imagination. Economic opportunity fortifies freedom, encourages entrepreneurial activity, spurs discovery, inspires big dreams, celebrates accomplishment, rewards creativity, and undergirds a culture of life, love, and well-being. Healthy communities are characterized by strong families, caring neighbors, civic pride, community standards, honest leaders, law and order, civic and moral, accountability, and ongoing communication and collaboration. 400 years ago, the Pilgrims set sail on two ships, the Mayflower and the Speedwell, the Speedwell, yes, originally two ships planned across the Atlantic. What motivated the Pilgrims? The Pilgrims sought what everyone truly wants, a place where they could live their faith freely and a culture that provides families with a healthy and hopeful future. When we celebrate Thanksgiving, sometimes we confuse the Pilgrims and the Puritans here is an easy way to distinguish them. In the eyes of the king, the pilgrims were the real villains. Whereas the Puritans sought to purify the king's new church, the pilgrims wanted no part of it. They fled to Holland around 1605. Although the pilgrims experienced greater religious freedom in Holland, they found limited economic opportunity and a decaying culture. They wanted more for their children. In a sense, they wanted all that morally responsible investing supports. Government, by the people, and the free market system began to coalesce at this time. 
Investors in England organized two joint stock companies with the goal of establishing commerce in the New World. Through these investors, the Pilgrims purchased the Speedwell, an old warship, and leased the Mayflower, a cargo ship. They upgraded the Speedwell by adding a taller mast to accommodate a larger sail. On the sail, the Pilgrims inscribed their motto, God with us. A huge painting in the United States Capitol honors the Speedwell and includes the Pilgrim's motto. The Speedwell initially accompanied the Mayflower, but had to turn back as its swaying tall mast caused the seal in the hull's ribs to leak. Ultimately, the Mayflower set sail alone on September 16, 1620. Following a treacherous crossing, they arrived amid incredibly harsh conditions. Many did not survive. But by the fall of 1621, with the help of the indigenous people, they gained the fruits of their labor and celebrated the first Thanksgiving. And so it is that the spirit of adventure and reasoned risk-taking that characterizes the best of American culture also inspired those who invested in the founding of what became the United States. Perhaps one day a painting depicting the investors who made the Pilgrim's voyage possible will appear in the capital rotunda. The arrival of the Mayflower 400 years ago also marked the beginning of an investment in the enduring spirit of the American people. That spirit has resonated through the years. It is what draws people from all over the world. They dream of a better way of life. No nation has enabled a higher standard of living for a larger number of people. Free enterprise, rooted in moral order, enables the pursuit of happiness. As the 30th President of the United States and former Governor of Massachusetts, Calvin Coolidge famously said nearly a century ago, the chief business of the American people is business. They are profoundly concerned with producing, buying, selling, investing, and prospering in the world. Larry Kudlow, current director of the United States National Economic Council and emeritus member of the Ave Maria Mutual Funds Advisory Board, frequently says, free market capitalism is the surest path to prosperity. History bears this out. The Pilgrims' courageous crossing resulted in the founding of the most prosperous nation in the history of the world. The Pilgrims' motto, emblazoned on the Speedwell sail, God with us, would become the nation's motto 334 years later. At the height of the Cold War and in response to an aggressive atheistic state, Congress adopted In God We Trust as the official national motto. George Swartz's latest book, In God We Trust, Morally Responsible Investing, tells the story of the Ave Maria Mutual Funds. It is fitting that this great man, having dedicated a half century to all that makes America great, continues to work in downtown Plymouth. One of the hallmarks of the center of town is the building where George's company is headquartered, the Mayflower Center. From his second story window, George can see the bustle of commerce, couples strolling the sidewalks, and families enjoying the park. And just across the street, the Mayflower Meeting House, a banquet facility where friends gather and give thanks. Though this is Plymouth, Michigan, it too is part of the great American story, a story that continues to unfold, a story worthy of ongoing thanksgiving. And that's the heart of the matter.